Hi there. Um, I'm not sure how long it's been since I last uh, vlogged or vlogged or whatever you want to call it. Um, but I thought I'd give another quick update while I can. Now the kids are all finally back to school after half term. Um, excuse me, I actually straightened my hair for the first time myself today without any mousse in it, so I don't quite know whether it's worked. You know, I've finally got my straighteners I've ordered since Christmas. Um, anyway, uh, today is day... I, let me just check my thing. Yep, day 22 in my cycle. It's my second cycle with Clomid. And I felt really, really rubbish, actually, all, all cycle cause with Clomid side effects. Um, I also wanted to do a blog today to mention something in case other uh, TTCers weren't aware or interested. Um... Is I tried to become a blood donor uh, this month, so I've been meaning to do it for ages and I feel really guilty that I haven't actually done it earlier because it is such an important thing to do. Uh, I contacted the National Blood Service and everything you know, to register, to so even be able to ask a question I had to sort of register. Uh, I sent them an email, explained to them that I was on Clomid, I told them I only take it the first you know, day two to day six, the so five days of my cycle, 50 milligrams. Uh, because there are certain medications you can't take and be a blood donor. But I honestly don't think I thought Climid would be a problem because, you know, you only take it those days. I thought surely if I donate blood, it may be the end of my cycle. It wouldn't be a problem. Uh, but this lady phoned me from the, their, I suppose, their version of customer services and asked me how long, again, I'd been on it. How long was I going to be on it? When was I finishing? Uh, and I said, oh, well, I've been given six months' worth and I'm due to see my consultant again in June and she said well you've finished it by then I said oh, I, you know it's hard to say because obviously the, you know the end result is you want to be pregnant and I don't think they'll let me donate blood if and when I get pregnant so sort of asking me when I finish was a bit pointless and she said you have to have stopped it or you know finished it and then wait three months before they'll let you donate blood which was a, a bit of a shock I you know I, I can't I hadn't imagined at all it would be as long as that 12 weeks she said because it's quite a, a big medication it, it, it was showing the blood and you know I don't know I suppose it could cause the problems that we you know the side effects we have in, in a recipient donated blood but you know like I said I didn't realise the results of the effects of being in the blood for quite that long so it's just something to be aware of so unfortunately I can't be a blood donor, I have to wait. She's going to contact me again. She counted three months from June. <laughs> yeah, not taking into account at all whether I'll be pregnant or not. So she'll contact me again in September, October time. Um, she did ask whether I'd had, whether I was being tested for infertility. And she was quite blunt, actually, to be honest. For someone who's supposed to be works with the medical side of things. And I said, well, yeah, I had had tests. So I wasn't currently under any tests because I've, you know, I've been given this treatment. I was just going to be seen again in June, you know, if it hadn't resulted in a pregnancy by then. So not that she was remotely interested. So there's there's that side of things. So like I say, day 22, I actually ran out of my GP ovulation tests this month, the day before I possibly ovulated. But it's been a bit of a strange month because I waited, I got, you know, all hopeful on day 14. I thought, well, maybe I'm going to ovulate perfectly like I did last month. Um... But day 14, I still was getting blank OPKs. Um, day 16, I had run out of OPKs and was using the GP pregnancy tests from the same company via Amazon UK. Um, and I have before used those and OPKs, and they have picked up ovulation. You know, I know many people say they don't and they shouldn't or whatever, but they, they do for me, they have. And again, this month, they started to come up with faint lines just you know that day day 16 over to day 17 so I don't know whether I'm going to count that as when I ovulated they've, you know, they've been negative since then so it's nothing exciting like a pregnancy or anything but there was a week before that there was a test a PK that I'd left and a line had started to come up so I could have ovulated a week before I might have not ovulated that week I've got no idea this month so I'm not able to count days past ovulation which I suppose in some ways is a good thing because maybe I'll chill out a little bit about it all but I doubt it and I had worked out that if I was 28 days again this month, like my first month on Clomid, brilliantly took me to 28 days. I was, I was so pleased, even though we weren't able to baby dance much because hubby had been ill. 
Uh, I had worked out that I'd be due to take a test next Thursday, which is actually my birthday. Um, but obviously now I'm not sure when I ovulated. I'm possibly still going to take a test that day, just as a day to count from. Uh, and that would be day 28 in my cycle. I think we worked that out. 20, 22 today. 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. Yeah, it'd be, well, 29 is the day... If I was on a 28 day cycle, it's the day my next cycle would start. So as good a day as any to test, even if my cycle's a few days on from that, it may still be okay to test then, if I haven't started my new cycle by then. Um, so I was saying I felt worse this month. I, I've constantly, all, all cycle this month, I've had headaches, sleeping trouble, um, constant sort of cramps or pains either side. Um really bloated but then I, I don't know whether all these things contract with but I had my gallbladder removed about four years ago I think four or five years um, and I've had constant sort of stomach problems and things since then so it's hard to know which came first isn't it um, this month with, is my 27th I think we worked out I was uh, trying to conceive number four um like I say, my birthday next week, I'll be 37. So it's, it's getting a... Time's getting on a little. Um, I don't know, I've got much, much more news. Hubby's still... You know, he's back at work, but he, he's still having various tests to try and work out the cause of pancreatitis he had, because he doesn't drink at all, bless him. And, you know, they don't think it's gallstones. He's had no symptoms, and I know what the symptoms of gallstones are. Um... So they are still trying to work out what those. He did have a, a camera down the throat yesterday at hospital, which was awful for him, I think, and a CT scan, another CT scan, repeat CT. The camera down the throat, they found uh, inflammation in his lower lower stomach. They said so, lower intestines, I assume, and they took a couple of biopsies of that to check for infections. And they said if that comes back positive, he'll have a month's antibiotics for that. But they don't. But you know the the consultant that did that doesn't feel that they, there's a connection between that and the pancreatitis so he doesn't think that's the cause so obviously they're still waiting on the result on the CT um, so he's still on the warfarin for the blood clots it, you know, it'd be interesting and scary at the same time to see whether now he's been on that about a month whether the clots have broken up at all or changed in any way this has been on that it's a bit scary because obviously the last CT is when they found them, so I'm a little bit wary of what they might find. And I've really gone off on a tangent about my hubby here, sorry. Just a bit of a strange time. Um, other updates. We had my eldest, um, sixth form parents evening last night. I have to I have to mention that because I'm just so, so proud. Um, he is doing amazingly. He is taking two AS levels. I don't know, obviously some of you... Uh, American girls and that, that read this, I don't watch this. I don't know how it works with A levels and qualifications in, that, in, in the States. Over here, an A level is split into two years. You have an AS level first, which you do for the year. And if you get good enough grades in that, you then go on to do the A2, which put together gives you the whole A level. Um, so he's doing his first year, he's doing his ASs, and he's doing um, health and social care and sociology. He was doing media, but it, you know he just found it too much to cope with, you know, it was jeopardising the courses he really cares about, which is, you know, the health and social care and the sociology, the subject he really wasn't understanding, so we did arrange for him to drop that, um, which is brilliant, because both teachers last night told me that was the best decision for him. Uh, the health and social care teacher actually has worked for 12 years with autistic students, and uh, I adored her, she was just brilliant, she's mad about my son, she thinks he's just the best thing ever. Um, she said he's putting his hand up in class. He's the only boy in his class. It's all you know. All the girls are taking this subject, but they've completely taken him to their hearts. She said that you know they listen to every word he says. You know the fact that he's putting his hand up in class and saying any words is massive. Um, so I you know I told her that, and the fact that he comes and talks to her about his autism is huge, 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 huge thing because he never ever would before. I was I was probably the only one he would speak to about it before. Um, and she was saying, you know, he has amazing, considering he's autistic, his empathy 
able to empathise with people it, it, it's coming on like anything and my husband believes that's because you know the chats I have with my son mm. In fact, he has an old uh, uncle who has severe additional needs, as they call it these days. And I've always made you know, made sure he's part of his life. Um, so it, that, that was all good. He's very involved in his uh, young enterprise scheme at the school, which has been a real surprise to me, because he normally won't put himself forward for things. He goes to regular you know, weekly meetings with that, and they actually, what it is, I don't know whether it's running all schools, but the sixth form had to set up a company, or the ones that were interested in doing it set up a company. And when I say that company, they literally had to source a product, you know, make a product or whatever, or service, source it all, sell shares in the company, they go to trade fairs. Most weekends he's been going off with these people to trade fairs, doing really well. And his company um, are actually making bracelets out of, um, they're, they're seeds that have been specially treated, berries. If I can get this up to the camera, I will. This is one. Anyway, he gave me that as a present yesterday to apologise for being a bit of a stress head and doing my head in the beginning of the week. Being a bit nasty to me, which happens after the course, I think, with teenagers, let alone with autism. Um, so that's made a huge difference to him. Uh, I don't know how else I can update, really. Um, the TTC thing, we're trying to be positive, I'll be still completely convinced it's going to happen. He's hating me being on Clomid because I am struggling with it, I must admit, I'm not feeling very good on it at all. And he sort of is starting to question whether I should contact my consultant and ask to be changed. But I'm still holding out hope that maybe I won't have to wait too long and it'll work and then I won't have to worry about taking it. But I mean, I've only taken it two months and I think if I contact a consultant he'd say, well I've given you six months, let's at least try that. So I'm trying to stick with it. I have threatened to double my dose next month just to get it over with. But he's not happy. I'm keen on that. I'm not really serious about doing that anyway. Um, so I hope everyone else is good. Everyone's doing well. A few people having their babies, I see. And continuing the, others continue this journey. Um, all the best to all of you. And I think that's probably it for now. We waffled on enough and bored enough of you to sleep. Um, thanks for watching yet again, if you have been. Uh, thank you. Bye.